Europe is still emerging from the devastation and dislocation of the most destructive war in history. Within its own resources, Europe cannot achieve, within a reasonable time, economic stability. The solution would be much easier, of course, if all the nations of Europe were cooperating, but they are not. Far from cooperating, the Soviet Union and the Communist parties have proclaimed their determined opposition to a plan for European economic recovery. Economic distress is to be employed to further political ends. There are many who accept the picture that I have just drawn, but who raise a further question. Why must the United States carry so great a load in helping Europe? The answer is simple. The United States is the only country in the world today which has the economic power and productivity to furnish the needed assistance. The six and eight tenth billion proposed for the first 15 months is less than a single month's charge of the war. To be quite clear, this unprecedented endeavor of the new world to help the old is neither sure nor easy. It is a calculated risk. It is a difficult program. And you know far better than I do the political difficulties involved in this program. But there's no doubt whatever in my mind that if we decide to do this thing, we can do it successfully. The great rubble heaps left by the war were soon diminished by an American investment in international friendship and goodwill, which also proved to be an effective economic weapon against spreading communism, the Marshall Plan. Offered on a self-help basis, Marshall Plan aid enabled many war-ravaged countries to regain their first foothold on a stable peacetime economy. Trade and production were stimulated, and communist plans, which were dependent upon poverty and despair for their success, were thwarted in many parts of the world. George Marshall resigned as Secretary of State in January 1949, intending to relax for the first time in almost 50 years.